Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In the last ed... Edward. In the last Edward. In the last episode, we worked with session drummer Edward Melton to learn how to track drums in Reaper. In this episode, we'll learn how to create a solid comp, or composition, from the multiple passes that Edward made. While this does cover some elements of drum editing, it is not a complete guide. If you'd like to learn more, check out my drum editing and Reaper course on ProMix Academy. Let's get started. I'd like to start by hiding my mixer so I can have a bit more room to work with. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's take a look at these drum tracks. We can see here at the end there's a few pieces that aren't connected to this longer part of the drum performance. I'd like to get rid of those. I'll right click and draw a box around these end pieces and delete them. Reaper is non-destructive, so even though you don't see those parts anymore, they are still there. So I'll right click and draw a box around the remaining tracks and drag this out just to make sure that we've got everything that we need. While I've got everything selected, I'll press the letter G on my keyboard to group the tracks. If I zoom in on my snare top, we can see there's an icon here that shows grouping, and you can also see a little bit of a green edge around the other media items, showing that they're a part of that same group. My purpose for grouping the tracks is to make it a bit easier for me to work with the takes. As you can see at the top of the media item, this is currently on take number three of three. I've got Reaper set to only show me the active take, but we can view the other takes by clicking on Options, and show all takes in lanes when room. You can see over to the right, my current keyboard shortcut for that is Control L. I believe that's the default, but you can of course bind this to whatever keyboard press that you may like. With that option turned on, I can now see the three takes. I can change the active take by either clicking on the take, or by pressing the letter T on my keyboard to switch to the next take, or Shift T to go backwards. You'll notice that the lower tracks follow my selection because they're grouped. Once again, if you're not familiar with the term comping, comping is the process of going through this performance and listening to each of the three takes, selecting whichever performance best fits that part of the song. The intro for this song is guitar only, and the drums come in at marker number two, which is intro two. I'll double click the marker name to create a time selection. And if I take a look down at the lower part of my transport, I've got a selection guide that shows me the starting measure for my selection, the end measure for my selection, and the amount of measures that are in my selection total. I usually like to split my comping into smaller sections, so I'll click in the Selection Length option and switch that from 16 measures to 8 measures, and you can see my time selection has changed. Now that I've got my selection made, I want to check one more option for grouping. In the toolbar, right-click the grouping icon, and make sure to enable Selecting One Item Selects Group. With this option enabled, I'll click my first track and press Shift-S on my keyboard to split. By default, a key press of the letter S will split wherever the playhead is, but Shift S will split on both sides of a time selection. As you can see, these eight measures are now separated from the rest of the drum performance. If I change takes on this selection, it only changes within the boundaries of this split. What I'd like to do now is listen to the drums over this eight measure selection with the metronome engaged, and listen to find out which of the three performances sounds best. So I'll turn on my metronome, solo my drums, and let's take a listen. That wasn't bad, let's take a listen to the next take. To make this a little bit easier to focus, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse my takes to only show the currently selected take lane. And we'll switch to take number three. This time I'd like to zoom in a little bit and pay attention to how well the notes fit on the grid. I can adjust my grid size by right-clicking the grid icon in the toolbar. And let's change this to eighth notes. Now if we go back and take a look at our drum performance here, let's take a look at the previous takes one more time. And we can see here that the snare transient is a bit off and these kicks are a bit off as well. I don't expect these takes to be perfect, but I just want to try to find which one is the closest and sounds the best. Now let's take a listen to take number three. Now any of those could pass, so let's take another listen to the end of the second take. And the first take. I think
think I prefer the impact of takes two and three at the end. Let's go with take number three for now and move on to the next section. Now I have a custom action in my toolbar to automatically grab the next eight measures, but just to make sure that we stick with stock here, I'll start at measure 13, grab a little bit, and go down to my selection editor at the bottom and type in number eight for the selection length. That has automatically grabbed the next eight measures. Zoom out a bit and we can see that. And we'll need to split there as well. So now we've got our first section and we can change takes there. In the next eight measures, we can change takes here as well. We can see that we're using take number three in the first section and we're switching back to take number one. I usually like to go back a little bit and listen to the transition between the two. It's most likely gonna be a bit off because we don't have a proper crossfade. If I zoom in, you can see it's just a regular fade, but we can fix that a bit later. Right now, the most important thing that we're looking for in the comping process is just to find the best performance for each section. Let's take a listen. And that doesn't sound bad, even transitioning from the third take back into the first, but let's preview the others. Go to take number two and listen from roughly the same spot. And take number three. Now, if you'd like, there's nothing wrong with listening to the accompanying music while you go through your comping process. Sometimes having the extra music does help you to better feel how those drums will sit into the mix. So let's go ahead and unsolo the drums. We'll turn those guitars down a little bit just so we can hear them for rough reference and see what this next section sounds like. I think for me it comes down to the transition moving into the next piece. So let's go back to take number two and take a listen towards the end of that movement. And take number one. Those are all just about the same. Let's go with number two. That sounds pretty good. Now we'll move on into the verse and grab the next eight measures using the same process I did before. Back up just a little bit and listen to it as it transitions into the verse. It's not bad, but if you'll notice, I forgot to split this. So let's go ahead while we've got this selected and shift S to split based on the time selection. Switch to take number two and listen to that section again. And take number three. I'm pressing the letter T on my keyboard to switch to the next take. I believe I like take number three best out of each of those. Let's move on to the next section. Grab the next eight measures and take a listen as this first half of the verse transitions into the second half. We'll be switching from take three into take one. And take number two. You 
may notice that I didn't split this piece based on the time selection, but that's the end of the song, so I'm not too worried about chopping this piece up. We'll switch to the second take and try again. The timing on this one feels a little bit off. Let's take a listen to number three. We had some minor timing issues on this one as well, but I believe I like take number three better. Even though I did this comping in sections of eight measures, you can make it as granular as you'd like. For example, if I'd like to go here at measure number 34, I can split the drums here and create a completely different comp by changing the takes for this last section. Let's switch this to take number two. Essentially, if you feel that another part would fit better in any given section, you can split your drums and switch takes as necessary. What I'd like to do next is go back to the beginning of the song, and while this somewhat falls into the territory of drum editing, I do like to make sure that the beginning of each section is as much in time as possible. So if we take a look here at the very beginning, we can see that our first transient is already off. At this point, I'd like to turn off snapping, and if I grab the left edge of take number three here at marker two, grab that left edge and drag it over to overlap, and you can see a crossfade has shown. Now if I hold shift and left click and drag the crossfade, I can change that point. What I'm doing by moving this crossfade is changing the relationship between this take and the previous take. We can see here we've got part of the kick transient that's coming before the downbeat, so I'd like to move my crossfade to the left to eliminate that. We can still see that the kick was a little bit early here on take number three. So at this point, I will hold Alt on my keyboard, and you can see that my cursor has changed to show a left and right arrow, and now I can left click and drag to move these contents and get that first kick transient on the line. Since my drums are grouped, you can see that all of the drums are moving at the same time, at least in this section. I'll scroll down to the next section, and we'll do the same thing. We'll zoom in to take a look at this, and we can see that we've got a kick that's before the beat. So I'll take the left edge of the next section, drag it to overlap and create the crossfade, move the crossfade, and then move my transient to make sure that it's in time, as much as possible. If you'd like, you can grab that crossfade and move it even further and find the perfect spot, which looks to be right about there. We'll know for sure when we're listening to it. Let's move on to the next section. Zoom in, and I have messed up my zoom, so let's fix that real quick. I'm still having a little bit of trouble getting used to this 4K screen, but we'll make it. I'll grab the left edge, drag it to overlap, move my crossfade, and then hold Alt, left click and drag to get that kick transient in line. And we'll scroll down and do the same for the next section. This can be a little bit tedious, but in the drum editing and reaper course, I'll show you some additional ways that you can definitely speed up this workflow with custom actions. And that looks to be the last section. So now that we've at least got the initial transient of each section in line, it should sound a little bit more in time. Let's go back to the intro, and with the metronome still enabled, and I'll turn the guitars up just a little bit more, let's take a listen. <laughs>
that's a pretty solid composition. We can press Ctrl L on the keyboard to see all of our takes, and we can see which one is highlighted for each section. If you'd like to save that composition, right click and drag a box around all the drums, then right click an item, go to comps, and save as new comp. I'll call this comp1, and hit OK. I like to do that as a bit of a safeguard, that way if I go back and accidentally mess with takes, I can draw a box around everything once again, right click, go to comps, and click comp1, and it restores my previous configuration. You can also right click and go to the take menu and delete to active take, but I tend to not do that because I may want to go back and change something that I didn't hear previously. You can also lock to active take to prevent accidental changes. I find that in most cases just saving the comp and then collapsing your lanes is sufficient. There were some sections that I heard as we were passing through this that could stand a bit more detailed editing to make sure that it's in line, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Once again, if you'd like to know more about how to streamline and optimize your drum editing workflow in Reaper, I invite you to check out my drum editing in Reaper course on ProMix Academy. The take system in Reaper can be a little bit confusing at first, but hopefully this guide has helped you to overcome any issues you may be having with the system. I definitely find it best to get more than one take in creating a comp as opposed to continuously retaking something trying to get one perfect pass. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee, I Like Coffee, or Patreon link below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time.